Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain faster. This movie tells the story about a man betrayed by a criminal gang who finally leaves prison and sets out on a path of vengeance. Will he be able to carry out his revenge? Let's find out in Faster. Faster begins by showing Jimmy Cullen, a large and stocky prisoner, who is staring at a photo of himself and his brother on the prison cell wall. Not long after, a warden came and took Jimmy out of his cell because it was Jimmy's day of freedom after so many years in prison. Before being released from prison, Jimmy is asked to appear before the warden, who advises him to start a new chapter in his life by being a good citizen who obeys the laws and regulations of the country. But Jimmy didn't seem to mind what the man was saying, because he really couldn't wait to get out of there. Meanwhile in another place, a corrupt police officer, named Slade Humphreys, is seen conducting transactions with a drug dealer. Humphreys is a drug addict, and often received a supply of illegal drugs. Upon his release from prison, Jimmy, nicknamed Driver, retrieves his 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle, a gun, and the information file of a man who was his target. Jimmy immediately stepped on the gas to his destination, which was located in Bakersfield, California. With steady steps, accompanied by vengeance that welled up, Jimmy then entered an office building and immediately killed a man whose information was contained in the file. After killing the first target, Jimmy went straight to Roy Groan, a man who gave him the car and gun. Roy is a reliable informant, and Jimmy forces the man to provide information about his other targets, because this is a revenge mission which Jimmy had prepared for during his sentence in prison. Roy, who didn't like being threatened, then called his bodyguard to beat Jimmy up, but after Roy's bodyguard finds out that Jimmy is the ghost, the most feared criminal of his time, they then run away leaving Roy just like that. Having no other choice and afraid of being killed, Roy finally reveals all the information about Jimmy's targets. While Jimmy rushes away to hunt down his targets, Humphreys and the cops begin investigating Jimmy's first murder after his release from prison. Elsewhere, a man nicknamed the killer who works as a hitman gets a mission from a client to kill Jimmy. Killer immediately accepted the job and got ready to carry out his mission. During the investigation, Humphreys teamed up with Detective Cicero, a woman who managed to get information about the perpetrator. Detective Cicero revealed that Jimmy had been involved in a major robbery and was nicknamed the driver because of his very reliable driving skills. Back then, when Jimmy and his gang managed to escape, they were ambushed by another group of robbers who then killed members of Jimmy's gang, including his brother, who was brutally murdered in front of his eyes. After that, Jimmy was shot in the head. The robbers thought he was dead, but Jimmy was rescued by a team of doctors who put an iron plaque on his skull then he was sent to prison. Detective Cicero concludes that Jimmy might want to take revenge after getting out of prison. Meanwhile, Jimmy manages to find the location of the next target, Kenneth Tyson, the middle-aged man who recorded the ambush and murder. Unbeknownst to Jimmy, Killer was also stalking him. After finding and killing his target, Jimmy immediately left. But then, Jimmy is intercepted by Killer and engages in a shootout. Jimmy manages to escape without hurting anyone, including Killer who then realizes that Jimmy only kills his target and never harms anyone who has nothing to do with his revenge mission. This affects Killer philosophically and begins to take the task personally. After that, Jimmy visited his former girlfriend, who knows he is killing those involved in the video. At first, the woman seemed annoyed that Jimmy had just ignored her. Jimmy said he had to do all that to protect her and their unborn child. With tears in her eyes, the woman reveals to Jimmy that she has aborted their unborn child and decides to start a new life with another man and achieve her happiness. After straightening everything out, she wishes him well and Jimmy continue his revenge mission. At a strip club in Nevada, Jimmy finds his next target, a man named Havis Nixon, and gets into a heated fight with the man. Jimmy manages to stab him and immediately leaves the scene. The next day, through the radio newscast, Jimmy learns that Nixon is not dead and is in critical condition in the hospital. Knowing this, Jimmy turned around to complete his mission. Meanwhile, Humphreys, knowing that Jimmy was the one who stabbed Nixon at the strip club, rushes to the hospital, thinking that Jimmy will definitely be there to kill Nixon. On the other hand, Killer's client informs him about the location of Jimmy. Upon arrival at the hospital, Jimmy headed straight to the operating room. Without the slightest mercy, Jimmy immediately killed Nixon there. Hearing gunshots, Humphreys rushed over and saw Jimmy run away. He immediately pursues Jimmy and they engage in a firefight that causes damage to the lighting system. Jimmy managed to corner Humphreys and pointed a gun at him. But then, Jimmy just disappeared when the lights went out, because according to his principle, the guy wouldn't hurt anyone who is not his target. After successfully escaping from the hospital, Jimmy drives his car at high speed, when he realizes that he is being followed by killer. Action high-speed chase on the highway is inevitable, with his ability as a driver, Jimmy manages to corner Killer. But when Jimmy has a chance to finish off Killer, the man doesn't kill him and instead shoots his car tire. 
Unlike Jimmy, who is only committed to killing his targets, as a hitman, Killer must complete his mission. He fired a shot at Jimmy, but missed and only hit his neck. After a chase with Killer, Jimmy then visits his parents' house and intends to kill his father. Jimmy believes that his father arranged to have him and Jimmy's brother, Gary, to be killed after they refused to share the money they stole in a bank robbery. While treating Jimmy's wounds, Jimmy's mother tries to convince him that his father would not do that, because they all know that his father loves Gary very much, even more than he loves Jimmy. So, it is impossible that his father planned the murder of the son he loved. Jimmy then realized that it was Gary's girlfriend who probably set them up. After that, Jimmy continued his mission to kill his last target, Alexander Gerard, who now works as a traveling evangelist. Along the way in carrying out his revenge mission, Jimmy often plays radio broadcasts about Gerard's spiritual lectures about sinful acts, such as robbery, murder, the dangers of revenge, and hatred that swell in the chest. Meanwhile elsewhere, the police seem to praise Humphreys for cornering Jimmy and tracking him down. Humphreys reveals to Detective Cicero that the targets Jimmy killed had been involved in a robbery and only one person was left alive. Humphreys then rushed to prevent Jimmy from killing the man. Not only Humphreys, Killer also seems to be on his way there after getting information from his client. Jimmy goes to the location where Gerard is preaching, and visited by many worshippers who seemed very moved by the preacher who was once a robber and murderer. It turned out that Gerard had known about the murders of his comrades and had purposely lectured on revenge and harboring hatred, so Jimmy would hear him on the car radio. Gerard then took Jimmy out, away from the crowd. Gerard reveals that he has repented and changed his life as he sobs begging for forgiveness so Jimmy would forgive him. Jimmy pointed a gun at Gerard, but after hearing all his confessions and apparently earnest apologies, Jimmy decided to keep him alive, and walked back to where Gerard was preaching. Jimmy sat there alone, contemplating all his deeds and sins. Not long after, Killer came there and pointed a gun at Jimmy who was looking at the photos of the targets he had killed. Killer then tells Jimmy that he will complete his mission to kill him. But before that, Killer says that there is still one more member of the gang who is responsible for the death of Gary and his comrades, someone who knows that Jimmy will return for revenge and assigns Killer to kill him. Elsewhere, Detective Cicero finally learns that there is still one more person involved in the incident that killed Gary, and manages to uncover the true identity of the man who shot Jimmy. She rushed to where Gerard was preaching to catch the man. As Killer and Jimmy face each other, Humphreys goes inside and points a gun at Jimmy. Afterwards, Humphrey shoots him in the head, revealing that he was the one who shot Jimmy in the video, and was the mastermind behind the murder of Gary and his gang. Humphreys learns from Gary's girlfriend about their successful robbery, and intends to take their loot. Killer then rushed out of the place. Humphreys went after him and offered money for his work, but Killer refuses and tells Humphreys never to contact him again. Thinking everything is over, Humphreys then called his wife, who turned out to be the informant, Gary's girlfriend. But then, the man is shot by Jimmy who apparently survives because of the metal plate implanted in his skull. The film ends by showing Detective Cicero finally arriving on the scene after Jimmy leaves, and the woman deliberately covering up Humphrey's involvement. Jimmy then scatters Gary's ashes on the sea and heads off into the sunset. Simultaneously, Gerard begins a sermon on forgiveness. Hatred and revenge, in the end, will only bring misery, not only to the target, but also to the person who harbors it. Forgiving is indeed very difficult, especially if we are hurt by someone to make our lives slump physically and mentally. However, sometimes, letting go all that hatred, and removing all the grudges within us, is the only way to move on with life and achieve inner and outer peace.